Live from Boston, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Chief Data Officer Summit. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the IBM Chief Data Summit here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Paul Gillen. We're joined by Ash Duper. He is the Chief Analytics Officer at Publishers Clearinghouse. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you, Rebecca, for, uh, for uh, calling me here. So, Publishers Clearinghouse is a billion dollar company. We think of it as the sweepstakes company. We think of the giant checks be the prize patrol, uh, surprising uh, contestants but it's a whole lot more than that. Tell our viewers a little bit, just explain all the vast amounts of businesses that you're in. Sure, so um, in a nutshell, we are a media and entertainment company with a large base of customers, about 100 million customers, who are motivated with the chance to win. Um, that's the sweepstakes angle to it. Um, and, and we have, you can categorize the business into two buckets. One is our media and entertainment side, which is the publishing side. Uh, and then the other is our retail side, which is where we send a, a sell merchandise to our customers. Think of us as a catalog and an e-commerce company. Uh, on the media and entertainment side, um, we, we, we have a very good engagement with our customers we get about two billion page views on a monthly basis on our website. Um, we, um, um, about 15 million unique customers on a monthly basis are coming to the site, and they spend a considerable amount of time with us on an average anywhere between 12 to 15 minutes, uh, depending on you know uh, the type of the customers. Some of our very heavily engaged customers can spend as much as about two hours a day with us um, um, <laughs> trying to win that, uh, that either the big prize or there are small prizes. Like if you go on our side, there's a winner every day. Like there could be a thousand dollar winner every day playing a certain type of a game. So that's uh, the media and the entertainment side of our business. That's completely ad supported. Um, and then we are, uh, the retail side of the business is, um, we are uh, in direct mail. So the traditional, we would send someone a direct mail package and an e-commerce company as well. Um, just as a, as a small nugget of information, we are, we send almost about 400 million pieces of physical mail, which is including you know, our packages that are sent and so on and so forth and built. So still a large direct mail company, um, still profitable and still growing. I'm sure the U.S. Postal Service is grateful for your support. <laughs> yeah. they, need, they need all the help they can get. Uh, the, uh, you, you collect uh, essentially the prize money is your, your cost of, of data acquisition and you have a huge database. You told us uh, earlier before we started uh, uh, filming of, of uh, 100 million people that you have data on just in the U.S. alone. Now what are you doing at the, at the uh, upper limits of, of what you're able to do with this data? How are you using this strategically other than just, you know, personalized email? Sure, so I think uh, using data is a core asset um, for us. We are utilizing in, in, in giving our customers better experiences by utilizing the data we have on them, marrying it with other data sources as well, uh, so that we can personalize the experience, so that we can make your experience when you come on the site better or if you are sending something to you in mail, we, um, we, we give you products that are relevant to you. So to bring it down to a little more tactical level, um, in case of um, when you are on our site and uh, on our e-commerce site, there's a product recommendation engine, right? Which goes in and recommends products to you on uh, what products to buy those product recommendation engines drive a significant amount of sales, almost about 40% of our sales are driven by the product recommendation engines. That is all understanding of the customer, what you're buying, what you're likely to buy, and, and the algorithms behind it are built through that. 
Can you give another example, though, of how if I were, I mean, you said all these customers are united by a, by a common desire to win and to play a game and to win. Right. But what are some other ways beyond product recommendation engines, which are now sort of old hat, right. um, what other ways are you enhancing the customer experience and personalizing it? Sure, sure. So I'll give you a recent example of where, where we are utilizing uh, some of the data to to give a, a more relevant experience uh, to the customer. So when a customer comes on our website, right, when you're uh, coming to register with us, so as you register, as you fill in the form of you, give your name address and your email address, and you hit submit, at that very second, there are some algorithms that are running behind the scenes to understand how are you likely to engage with us? How are you going to, let's say, because we have a diverse uh, business, are you likely to buy something from us? Or are you not likely to buy something from us? And if you're not likely to buy something from us, which means I can get you to, and you know, not waste your, your time in showing you merchandise, but I can give you an experience of free-to-play games, and you can, within free-to-play games, what type of games, like um, understanding the persona of the person, we could say, hey, you probably are uh, a lotto player, or you are a word game puzzle player, and you know we could give you and direct you to those experiences that are more relevant to you. In case of your, if you're going to buy something from us, are you likely to buy, um, you know, highly likely to buy or less likely to buy? Depending on that, uh, should I show you just 10 or 15 products or should I show you like uh, more than that? Are you more likely to buy a magazine? And, you know, so making it more relevant for the customer experience is where it is all about. We use a lot of this data to, to make that happen. So analytics is really core to your business. It's completely strategic. Where do you sit in the organization, uh, organizationally? Uh, uh, how, how is that reflected in, in the way your job is integrated into the organization? Sure, so it is, um, I'm part of the C-suite, um, and I think my, our CEO, he had this vision. I think he started, uh, he, um, uh, he, he loves data, first of all, <laughs> um, and... Uh, Lucky for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> and, and he truly believes that, you know, data and analytics can drive growth and bring innovation from different areas if we utilize it in the best possible way. So, A, I'm part of that, uh, uh, that team um, and work very closely with each of the business owners. That's the key out here is, like, you know, it is... Uh, analytics is not in one corner, but in the center of all the um, uh, all the business areas, giving them either insights or building algorithms for them, so that we can make either better decisions, or we can power growth, uh, depending on which way we are looking at it. In term, you're the chief analytics officer, and we're here at the chief data summit off, uh, here. How? How different are the roles in your mind, and, and do they work together? I mean, you you, you have a, you have a CTO that ha that is responsible for sort of chief data officer yes. responsibilities. How do you, how do you two collaborate and work together? It is a very tight collaboration, and they are two separate jobs, but it is a very tight collaboration. We work hand in hand with each other, um, and the best part I would say is is that you know. We are all focused and we are all you know, driving towards how can we drive growth? That's the bottom line. That is where it, you know, the buck stops for all of us in the companies. Are we building projects? Are we doing things that is going to grow the company or not? So the collaboration with, uh, with the CTO is a, a critical piece. Um, they own the infrastructure as well as the, um, the data. And when you own the data, which is, you know, in a way slightly, I would say, um, you know, data governance, I would say, is a thankless job, <laughs> believe it or not. But it is a critical job. It is, you know, if your data is not right, it is not going to work for whatever you're trying to do. It's the garbage in, garbage out. Uh, we all know about that. 
um, and we work very closely. If there are um, CapEx proposals that needs to be put in place because we are going after a certain big project, whether it's you know putting things together in one place for a 360 view of the customer, all of that is worked hand in hand. We work together um, in, in working towards that. What is your big data infrastructure like? Is it all in the cloud? Is it your own? Are you Hadoop based? Or what, what, what do you use? All of the above. All of the <laughs> <laughs> Now, so uh, what we have is, uh, because we are such an old company, um, you know, our, we, we still have our legacy DB2 uh, infrastructure, a lot of our backend databases, a lot of our backend processes are all attached to that. Uh, we are, um, we have a warehouse, a SQL Server warehouse. We also, for our web analytics, we use Google's BigQuery. Um, that's where you collect a lot of data on a daily basis. And recently, I think about three years ago, we went into the, uh, the cloud environment. We have a MapR cluster, um, which was cloud-based, um, and now we have brought it on-prem very recently. Um, back from the cloud. Back from the cloud on-prem. And there was very good reasoning why we did that. I think, um, frankly, it's cheaper on a longer term to bring that on-prem and you're a lot more in control with all the issues with data privacy. And um, so so it, it is. I, Which I hope you don't mind my interrupting, but we have to wrap here, and I need to get that question. <laughs> yes, you have data on 100 million consumers. What is what are you doing with all of the attention being paid to privacy right now? What are you doing to ensure the? the, the oh, we have a very, um, very, um, uh, I would say, uh, intricate infrastructure, data governance, data. Th there's a whole um, um, uh, slew of, I would say people and processes around that to make sure that you know our data is not exposed now luckily it is you know it is it, it's not like PII to the level that it's a healthcare data so you are not really you have information that is crazy but you still have the PII the name and address of these customers um, and as an example, none of the PII data is actually available to even to the analytics folks. It's all stripped, the PII is stripped off. You give us uh, uh, an ID to the customer and and the an frankly, the analytics team don't need the PII information to build any algorithms um, as well. So, so there, is, there is a whole uh, process around keeping the data secure. Great, well Ash, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. I'm Rebecca Knight for Paul Gillen. We will have more from the IBM CDO Summit just after this.